For more on global trading for the renminbi, we talked to Hua Deming, a professor at the National School of Development, joining us live from Beijing. Professor, welcome to the show. Let me start by asking you, this uh, progress of the renminbi, the renminbi is still a small part of the $4 trillion that's traded every single day. How big of a deal is this? Okay, I think uh, renminbi is, as now, it's uh, probably because of China's rising power. In the future, maybe 10 years down the road, China is broke, it's going to be as big as, as, the, as the United States as, in terms of GDP. So the demand for renminbi in, in terms of trade now is increasingly significant, but the demand for renminbi as a capital, uh, that is uh, something that we're all be uh, betting on it. So at this moment, the renminbi's offshore center it becomes uh, sort of a flourishing all over the world. There's a lot of talk about offshore centers. When Hong Kong became the first offshore center, it was a very big deal. Then came Singapore, and now other cities are lining up as well. Are these going to be still as relevant as the renminbi becomes more mainstream, if you will? Yes, uh, I think there are going to be increasing numbers of this, these offshore centers because at this moment that we only know that China, uh, the, uh, the Hong Kong is definitely a the center, but uh, for instance, uh, cities like Taipei or uh, Singapore, they're competing for this uh, a bigger market. So I'm not sure how the future will become, because simply put, uh, Taiwan is, is a very important trading partner for uh, mainland Chinese, uh, Chinese mainland. However, Singapore is more or less of a small uh, financial center. So we, ha we have to see well, what's going on in the future. There's been a lot of talk about currencies. People say that the yen is overly weak or the dollar should be this and the euro is too strong and that every country has a different opinion about their currencies. Usually it should be weaker. With respect to the renminbi, do you believe the renminbi is trade trading at its current level? Is that the equilibrium level? Okay, that's a good question. Uh, well, remember that China is still a capital control country in general. so. Offhand, I can say that renminbi, if you look at the trading side, pure trading side, that probably renminbi is close to its equilibrium level simply because the current account surplus or deficit, well, China doesn't have a deficit, current account surplus has been, has been declining. I think right now it's only about 2% of GDPs, which is down way below the previous like 10%. So if you just simply look at a trading account, a current account, then renminbi's uh, fluctuation in any significant levels, uh, appreciate or depreciate, seems to be very unlikely. That would that draws my conclusion. Uh, renminbi is probably close to its equilibrium level, given that capital control is still ineffective. Professor, I want to thank you for your analysis, helping us clarify a fairly complicated topic, Professor. Uh, Hual Deming, professor at the National School of Development, joining us live from Beijing. Thank you. Thank you.